Welcome back traders, Ali Casey here from Stad Oasis channel. Today's video is about Monte Carlo testing. We will do more advanced Monte Carlo simulations in strategy context to see the to see its effects on our trading system data distribution. So let's jump in. To do Monte Carlo testing the advanced version, we will go to retester. I put the strategy, the same one from last video, just add it to the retester. You can build anything and just move it. Just click anything and click retest and it will copy it to the retester to isolate it basically. So in the retester, if you go to cross check and we will enable it and then we can do this one. So basically these Monte Carlo tests are exactly the same. I mean, in, in terms of concept, they both manipulate the data and not the logic of the trading system. So your trading logic is intact and we're only manipulating the data points like the price, uh, the date starting, uh, the slippage, the we're only manipulating the results of the trades, not the logic itself. So in that term, they are both the same, except this one, the randomization is really fast. And this one, the randomization is slower, let's say than the other one. I would rather that if they keep it both together, that will make the confusion less, but in any case. So the first one we're going to do is randomize history data with probability of 30% up, 30% down, maximum price change of ATR 30% up and down. It's a convoluted way to say, okay, we will manipulate our trades in the up direction. So let's do that. We cannot do zero, let's do one here, and let's do 50 so it will be pronounced we can see the difference so this one we will have a probability of 50 percent that we will manipulate the data and when we do we will manipulate it at a price change of 50 percent of atr so that's what we're doing and only to the upside so this should enhance our uh, current strategy and let's do the uh, results so in monte carlo let's test and we should see the results here. And now it's going to take a little bit longer than last time we did in this uh, simple test. And we can see now that the curves are all up because we're manipulating to the upside. And here's the difference. The net profit was 94 and now we're making 103. Of course, we enhance it just by adding more <laughs> to the uh, profits. And you can see that the results, uh, it was 300 almost and now it's 430 trades. This, by the way, you can add any column here by adding column, and then you need to specify. So, for example, number of trades, that's the original, where it's using the main data. And here, when you double-click, you need to pick uh, the where it's calculated from. So, this is the Monte Carlo trades manipulation. That's the first one, and this is the second one. You need to pick Monte Carlo retest methods, what they call it, and then pick the confidence level. And then it will calculate it based on that. So I have here net profit and number of trades. This is the original and this is the Monte Carlo test. So we can see that the test has a huge effect on the upside. And I can show you now we can do the downside. If I flip this. We can see the effect, of course. This is manipulating 50% to the upside with 50% ATR ad addition. And this is, we're affecting 50% to the downside with negative 50% ATR subtraction. Basically, we're subtracting 50% uh, of ATR from the uh, profit and loss. And here we can see that at 95% 90%, confidence, we expect $22,000 and 43% drawdown, $43,000 drawdown. While with this one, at 95% confidence, we expect $109,000 at $26,000 uh, downside. Now that I show you the difference, of course, the way to do it is by combining both of them. And if we go with the default, which is 30 each, we will have basically a better picture than both of these. I just split them up to show you the difference. So now this is both of them together and we can see it's a mix between uh, the first and the second one. 
So remember, Monte Carlo simulation, the whole point of Monte Carlo simulation is, is to have different uh, curves, meaning we want to see this is one curve out of thousands of uh, curves, possible curves in the future. So we want to see what's, uh, what's the distribution. And by distribution, I want to know the average, the up and the, uh, the upper channel, the lower channel, and how it affects the net profit and the drawdown. That's the most important part to see in Monte Carlo which is the effect of drawdown. And remember, this is the original, where at 95% confidence, we expect 109,000. Uh, sorry, this is the plus one. And this is what we expect. The, originally, we were making $94,000, and now we expect, at 95% confidence, $61,000. And this is the number of trades. And of course, we can add the drawdown here also. And first one will be main data, and the second one, will be Monte Carlo trade manipulation at 98% confidence level. And now we can see that originally we had $21,000 uh, and now we have $31,000 at 90, which is this one, 98% confidence level. Okay, the next on the list is a very, actually very simple test. All these uh, randomizing uh, history with a maximum change of number of ticks, and with the distance from price and the slippage uh, spread, uh, all these don't affect the price as much as these. So I will do them to save time. I'll do them each separately and show you the results. Okay, almost done here. Uh, I did, let's see. So I did the modified uh, randomized history, changing the tick and then the price distance and then the slippage and then the spread and last one is the uh, starting bar and uh, we can tell from this uh, this is the net profit of the monte carlo and this is the drawdown of the monte carlo you can see they're all very close so while this one and this this is the first one where we did 30 percent 30 percent you can see the effect is big we went from 94,000 to 61 and the drawdown went up from 21 to 31. But now, look, the 94, now 71, 94, 91, 78, 91. And the drawdown, 21, 23, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 18, 21, 21. Like even these two, there is barely any difference noticeable, 94 and 91,000. That's nothing. Which tells us what? Which tells us that this is not, uh, so this one, so the randomizing starting bar and the slippage from zero to five doesn't affect the strategy that much, which is good in a way, but it also tells you that as a test, it's not a robustness test. And which brings me to the next point. I don't consider Monte Carlo as a robustness test because any strategy with uh, with decent <laughs> with decent let's say uh, logic will pass monte carlo test now yes some strategies will fail but they fail because they're already crap so i you could say it's a faster way to vet strategies that they are crap uh, but when you learn how to build strategies you will not have that many really crappy strategies. So that's why I don't use them to for robustness testing, but it's really important to use Monte Carlo and I that's how I use it. I use it for capitalization. Because why we're, we're interested in this? So let's pick uh, this curve again. I'm interested in this because if I wanna conserve my capital, well, first of all, I don't wanna see 100% a loss. That means I am confident 100% that I will not lose all my money. Okay, that's part one. Now, part two is the drawdown. So part one, okay, I'm making money at 100%. So all curves, 1,000 iteration of these curves, at randomizing all the results, I'm still guaranteed a, a profitable uh, end. And also, I need to figure out the drawdown. So at 100%, I'm confident that I will have uh, less than $34,000 uh, 
uh, drawdown, but more than $32,000 drawdown. So between these two, yes. So this is very important because then uh, if $34,000, and of course you can do this in percentage, if that's too high, then you need to increase your capital to find out the amount needed to start a strategy. Now, again, even this one is not, it doesn't give you the full picture and there are other software packages that gives you the full picture, but still this is better than uh, at least nothing. It's better than you're just uh, trading your own, your only curve, which is one out of thousand possible curves. Now, the last one I'm going to show you here is this one and which this one is like the first one it really affects the price and i'll tell you why randomizing strategy parameters with probability of 10 percent and maximum change of 20 percent that means if we go to the code so for example this strategy code we have all these parameters so stop loss coefficient profit target and uh, bars open period all these variables which is which are built into the logic of the strategy so for example this is momentum main chart and here here is the value momentum changes down period now this is a value that you define here and here we can see is defined at 20. this monte carlo will take this 20 out of this variable it will take only 10 percent of it and make a change to it by a maximum of 20 percent so going back to the logic here, so this value that we found, for example, this one, currently it's 20. So in uh, a thousand iteration, we will only take 10 iterations. Uh, sorry, in a uh, 300 trades, we will only take 30 trades. And in those 30 trades, we will change this one by 20%. 20% out of 20 is four points. So we will take 10% of 300 trades, which is 30 trades, and we will change this variable by up to maximum 20. So it could be 20, 22, 18, 17, 21, 24, and so on and so forth. And so that's one. And then we will take the next one. So the next one we have, for example, is bar open period. So this one is 40. So you can see we have many variables in the strategy. So obviously then, this Monte Carlo testing will affect, will have a huge effect on the strategy. And we can see it, so let's test it. Because now we're affecting uh, the logic. I know we're not changing the logic, but we're affecting it heavier, let's say, than the others. And we can see the effect. Look at this, from 94 we went to 50, and from 21 to 27. And you can see the curves now are wider at the end and giving us much, uh, let's say, more practical scenario of, of what we can face in the future. So while most of these Monte Carlo tests, they are nice, I would use this one and this one. These, only these two, to have the maximum variability, maximum noise addition to the price. And actually you can combine them. And so you can you can click it, both of them, save, and we can test. And this is the combination of both. And you can see now oh, we have a lot more noise uh, from, let's say, this one alone or this one alone. And you can see now the noise is, uh, is much bigger. And that's what we want. We basically adding noise to the uh, basically to the price level where before we're only affecting the profit and loss all the other tests uh, we're only affecting the profit and loss uh, but this one we're really affecting the the variables inside the strategy and this one we're affecting the price so we're taking best of both worlds so i would consider both of these to use in your monte carlo testing as they will give you the broad picture of uh, will, how will noise affect your uh, strategy? Of course, this one uh, will lead us. So this last one, randomizing strategy uh, parameters, will lead to the SPP module. So this module is actually more advanced implementation of this one. And we will do that in a separate video 
and uh, you already know that's why I picked it because it's already it's like a simplified simplified version of the uh, SPP. So that's why I love to use this one instead of the rest. So as usual, I hope this video was useful to you. If it is, please do uh, hit the like button, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. So you'll be notified when a new video get uploaded to the channel. Comment below, ask me any questions. I do answer all the questions on uh, email, on uh, comments, on the YouTube below, and in my Discord server. And as always, good luck with your trading. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.